Hello, fellow wrestling crusaders, and welcome to our latest episode. My name is Sean Waskrug. With me, as always, is Jordan J.P.O. Owens. That's me, RVD. I'm a J.P.O. <laughs> yes, and we are here talking about money in the bank. It is less than 24 hours away. Uh, another, Jordan's, I know Jordan's going to annoy Jordan, another five-match pay-per-view in a foreign country. It's in Toronto, but I mean, another five-match yeah. pay-per-view. Um, where we just got done doing our uh, reaction to AEW Forbidden Door, where we got 15 matches. 10 more matches in the show. (laughs) Now, granted, we're only paying, like, what, five bucks a month for Peacock (laughs) compared to 50 got They got the money. They just like these short shows all of a sudden. I know, I know. At least for Money in the Bank, we got two big Money in the Bank matches, um, one world title match, right, so... And an inter- I, mean, I don't hate it system. as much as like a clash, for instance. But yeah. still, I'm not saying much more. One or two more. <laughs> There's a. I, I'm pretty sure if we had the roster in front of us, we could probably come up with a couple other matches that we could book. Oh no! I mean, I mean, even like even just off the top of the dome, SmackDown on SmackDown the night before, we we're getting a, a, a title defense DIY versus Grayson and Theory. Like, yep. again, they, there's been zero tag titles on these pay per views since Mania. And we're in July. That easily could have been switched over. You, know you could have I mean? had like, you could have Ludwig funny. and Sheamus wrestle on this card because uh, they've had yep. they've had a little thing going. Um, that's a perfect. That's a perfect. You know, second third match. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, they're, Bailey's they're, doing Jack. Uh, ba- no, no, Bailey. SmackDown tonight. SmackDown tonight. Bailey's wrestling Piper again. On the pay per view. No, on SmackDown. Wrestling. Right, Bailey's that's wrestling what I'm, Piper. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, they could have. They could have carried it yeah, over i agree on yeah. review she's doing jack uh, yeah. that's what i'm saying you know we got two both women's titles you know what i mean tag titles again newly crowned women's tag champs let's fucking solidify alba and isla nope that's all i'm yeah, saying you could have had them have a rematch against bianca and jade bianca and jade's just having a random tag match with candice Lorraine and indy hartwell on smackdown you could have had a tag team yeah. match there Fucking Finn and JD, they could have done a rematch with Awesome Truth just to fill there out you the go. card. Just to solidify. Um, yeah. But yeah, we got five matches on the pay per view here. We'll leave the Money in the Bank matches to last because that right. one, we're going to have a lot of speculation. So let's go ahead and go with uh, the match that they really started to finally book over the last two weeks. We've got the Intercontinental Championship. We got Sami Zayn against Braun Breaker. Um, does Sammy retain again, or does or do we finally move the belt off of him and go to Braun? What are your thoughts? So I've been wrong before, doubting Sammy. We've been wrong for the last two pay per views, <laughs> but sooner or later we got to be right. So I'm going to say Braun. Um, again, I just feel like same thing with Chad, but in this instance now, like this is the first push of Braun on the main roster, right? Let's just solidify it. You know what I mean? The dude could be a future star, so. Sammy can take the loss. That that'll be fine. It'll give him give a hard fought match. I hope this is a solid, you know, 12 to 15, 20 minute match, whatever. Um, but yeah, let Braun get it in the end. Let's solidify a new star. And also, too, not to give spoilers, but this to me is probably the only title change I think I think is gonna happen. Or that I'm gonna say is gonna happen. So all right. I'm going to put my booking hat on, which I know you love, because this is when you go, fuck, well, I wasn't thinking of it that way. Now i got to rethought. I'm not I'm not going to change anything that you said, but I'm going to put my booking hat on. Uh, the only way I see Braun losing this match is by disqualification because he goes too far. He either won't let go of a hold or he won't stop beating him up and he pushes the ref or he does something because Braun has that out yeah, with that's... his anger that that could be the reason that he loses. So he loses, but he doesn't get pinned. Right. Um, that is the only way I see Sammy, because if Sammy pins him straight up, that is going to kill Braun's momentum. Now, if yeah, he, yeah. if Braun obliterates Sammy and loses that way, then Braun still looks strong. Sammy plays that, you know, that underdog champ, and that goes from there. But I agree. I think Braun is 100% should win and will win, because what I think should happen, like I said, booking hat. Braun wins, but in doing so, obliterates and injures Sammy. Sammy goes off a of TV. We give him a, like a month or two breather. Sammy comes back for the inevitable bloodline feud for War Games in November. Because right now we've got Solo, Jacob, Tama, Tanga. That's four. Roman, 
Jimmy. J. Hello, Sammy. Honorary Ooze. <laughs> yes, the Honorary Ooze. You get the original Bloodline back together against the new Bloodline, War Games, November. But it's only going to hit extra hard if Sammy's gone. So if this is the out. Have Braun fuck up Sammy and have Sammy be gone. And then him show up when the bloodline, when the new, when the old bloodline's like, man, it's just too many bodies. We're not, we're not able to get over them. Here comes Sammy to save the day. The crowd will lose their fucking minds. That's my booker hat. That's how I would book it. Let Sammy have a couple months off to, you know, just live life, do his little comedy shows, stuff like that. And let Braun just rough shot the next kind of Gunther kind of role. Don't have him keep it for that long. Cause that's the one thing that I've been liking about with Braun lately is that, Braun looks unstoppable, but he's selling through his matches. He looks beatable in his matches. Like I can buy that anyone has a has an opportunity to beat Braun. Whereas with Gunther, it's like, yeah, Gunther's gonna like make sure you look good, but I'm not buying that Gunther's ever gonna lose in a match. Braun, as I've been watching him work, there are times where I was like, this person, whether it be like Ricochet or whoever, they can beat Braun. They just gotta catch Braun off guard because they are taking there's times in the match where they are taking control of Braun in the match. But this is what we need. Braun needs to get pushed through the roof. And then he needs to kind of be that thorn in Adam Pierce's side. Like he already is, but now he's got a belt. You can't what are you gonna do? You can't do nothing now, Adam. He's got that he's got a title now. You gotta kind of fucking run with it. Um, but that's that's how I would book this. But yeah, I think we're both in agreement. Braun should and will win the belt. If Sammy wins it, fuck, I don't know what you're doing. I, I don't know what the booking is at that point of yeah. Sammy keeps the title. I, I, I didn't know it last month when he beat Chad. But I mean, I don't think any of us planned that Chad was going to fucking be in the Wyatt Six storyline. <laughs> I don't think any of us planned that. Um, but yeah, if Sammy wins, I really don't know where they're going to go with it. I really, I really, really don't. Um, but next, let's go ahead and go with the uh, probably the main event, I feel, which is the World Heavyweight Championship match. Uh, last chance match. We got Damian Priest versus Seth freaking Rollins. If Priest wins, Rollins can never challenge for the title again as long as Priest is champion. Priest has only been champion for like two months, guys. This booking doesn't make sense. Um, and if Rollins wins, Priest must leave the Judgment Day. Booking hat, I think I already know where this is going to go, but where, where do you think? Well, I more intriguing match for SummerSlam is Seth and Gunther. But I feel like they've set a nice precedent of Damien Priest is here to subvert expectations, to prove he's not, you know, paper transitional. And I don't, and I think Gunther might take it. So, I, I mean, I've been saying it for like two months now that Gunther's winning the belt at SummerSlam. That's, and that's what, and I don't think they're going to necessarily have Seth take it just to lose it, you know, in a month. So, yes. I'm going to say Damien retains. It's the, it, that's, it's, it's one of those where it's like you booked yourself into a, into a corner. Because by making this stipulation of, well, Seth can't def- get a title shot as long as Priest is champ. Yeah, for like a month. Because <laughs> Gunther is probably going to win the belt at SummerSlam, and then Seth can t- can challenge again. So it's like, what's the point of this booking unless Priest is going to win at SummerSlam, and then Seth doesn't have a title shot for a while? That would be a curveball right there. But I also don't like that Gunther hasn't really done anything since he won King of the Ring. I don't like that he's just been sitting around not doing anything. He's he's popped up like twice yeah, yeah, that's true. about it. But it's like you haven't given Gunther yeah. anything to do. Um, you're kind of like – not that he's like cooling off by any means because when he shows up, you're like, fuck yeah. But God, you got to start giving Gunther something to do. Now, granted, after starting Monday, yeah, they're going to start building towards SummerSlam. But I don't like that they haven't, they haven't done anything with Gunther since King of the Ring. But, yeah, I don't – the only way I see anything happening with Seth winning is because of the Judgment Day storyline. They've been teasing this thing where Judgment Day might be splitting, and then Liv is kind of taking control of Judgment Day to a point because Liv keeps helping and helping helping. Rhea's got to be coming back here very, very soon. And so it kind of becomes more like Damien and Rhea against Judgment Day kind of thing. I don't know. That's a, that's a side plot they could go with. That's the only way I could see Seth winning this. Because, yeah, if Seth wins, then I don't see him keeping the belt past Gunther. So you're not going to have Seth be a one-month champ. That You just don't do that to Seth unless you really, really don't feel confident that Damian and Gunther is really going to move the needle in terms of the fans. But 
adding the stipulation adds something to it, but I don't like the Seth stipulation. The Seth stipulation just feels counterintuitive. Either he's going to win and okay, no big deal, or he loses. And then if, if Damien doesn't win at SummerSlam, then this whole stipulation just doesn't mean shit because it's like, Oh, okay. Well, so for a month, he doesn't get a rematch. Okay. No big deal. And then what Gunther's first paper first feud is yeah. probably going to be Seth at that point. So I don't like the Seth stipulation. The Damien stipulation, I think, adds some intrigue to it. The Seth one makes no sense to me. But I think both of you and I are in agreement that Damien is going to keep the belt. Um, question is, does he win it straight up? Or does Seth, do we have a feud starting with Seth? Who do you think, if someone is going to interfere and cause Seth to lose the match, do you think Do you think Damien went straight up or there's going to be shenanigans? Uh... I feel like Judgment Day is not going to be good enough to keep Seth down. It's got to be something else. Yeah, I don't know. I think you might just give a clean, if not close to clean, win here. I think. You know what I mean? I think at this point you might as well. I don't know if you need too many shenanigans, but I'm sure there will be because it's Damien. The only other storyline that I had a couple months back when we were talking, or a couple weeks back when we were talking about this, is that the Wyatt Sick were going to focus on Seth when they came back, but they're focusing on Gable for some reason. Um, so it wouldn't, I, I don't think there'd be a real point of, of them going after Seth and Chad at the same time. Um, but I can't think of anyone else because Drew's tied up with Punk. So that, that, that takes that out of the equation. So I can't really think of who else would be going after Seth. Um, which makes me wonder what's, what's Seth going to be booked at for SummerSlam then? Unless they're going to do some weird, like, double pin or some weird thing that's going to happen where the both stipulations become null and void. And then we get a triple threat match at SummerSlam with Seth Gunther and Damien. That could happen too. I really am not sure where they're going to go with it, but I I think regardless, Damien's going to have the belt by the end of the night. Now, whether there's uh, no contest to end this or Damien winning straight up, Damien's not losing this belt. Um, Cause I just don't see if, if Seth wins, I'm not going to be mad. I'm just gonna be. I'm just gonna go. But why? Do you not have confidence in Drew or Damien? Because that doesn't look good. That you guys don't have the confidence in him for it. Uh, unless you're gonna do a complete Judgment Day turn on him, um, which intriguing storyline wise. But I just don't like Seth being a potential transitional champion because you don't build Gunther this up this much to have Gunther lose his title shot at SummerSlam. I feel like Gunther's like almost like a hundred percent. But then again, we thought about that with Cody at WrestleMania 39 and. He fucking lost to Roman. So who knows? Who knows? Next, let's stick with Cody. Uh, we got a six-man tag team match. We got Cody, Randy, and Kevin against the Bloodline. Um, we don't know what the combination is yet. I think on Monday they showed the graphic, and it was Solo, Tama, Tonga, and um, Tonga Loa with Jacob Fatu in the back. Uh, SmackDown, Jacob Fatu was in the front, and – Tongaloa was in the back. We don't know what three. I think we know that Tama and Solo definitely. We just don't know if it's going to be Jacob or Tongaloa. I think it's going to be Jacob. Um, but what are your thoughts on this match? Where do you see this going? Yeah, no, I, yeah, Dimmy Jarkama is also just very vague about the bloodline. Like, yeah, it doesn't necessarily dictate who's in this yet. Um, yeah, we'll see. Maybe they'll try to somehow pull some shenanigans. Maybe it'll be all four. I can see that being a possibility. But, uh, yeah, this one, uh, this was actually a bit tough for me. Because we've seen four or six of this already, you know, back at Backlash. So now yeah. we're in doing the six man. So do you just continue to have Bloodline look strong? I mean, I feel like he kind of got up, but I mean, we, I've been wrong before where I've gone for the faction and the other team wins, but I'll go for the faction and I'll say you keep Bloodline looking strong. Uh, this could set up Cody versus Solo, might be a cool match to do. So here's once again, put the book and hat on. Uh, if you're not going to start setting Roman up now, because Roman, I feel like Roman is either going to be showing up in the next three pay-per-views. If it's not going to be here, and if it's not going to be at SummerSlam, then it has to be September, because we got to start getting that build towards Survivor Series. Um, I feel like, I feel like we, Bloodline needs to win this, because you can't bring Jacob in and, and run rough shot and then have all, you know, four of them lose especially after what happened last week with them taking out Paul. I feel like Bloodline needs to win this for storyline purposes. Now, I see two routes this is going to go. Either Bloodline just straight wins, 
which once again, you're taking out the three biggest baby faces, you know, on the card at that point. Uh, or I see us starting to set up the potential pay-per-view main event for SummerSlam, which is Cody Rhodes against a heel Randy Orton. It might not happen here. It might happen the Friday after. But every time you, if you've been paying attention, for anyone who's been paying attention, every time Cody is near Randy, Randy's looking at the title. Randy's doing like this little side eye look at the title. Either Randy's going to turn on both KO and, and Cody, or which then at that point, then you're, you might have a little mini feud between Randy and KO. Um, but. Unless it's either that or they're going to go solo Cody at, at SummerSlam. They can go multiple routes. But I feel like it's inevitable that at some point we are going to get Randy versus Cody and we're going to get heel Randy back because that's just Randy being Randy. But I've noticed it that every time Cody's holding the belt and he's focusing here, Randy's kind of doing this and kind of looking at the belt. So it's, it's inevitable. Whether they're going to pull the trigger here or not, Bloodline definitely is winning this match because they need, they need to keep – boasting them up so that way when Roman comes back it feels like a vital threat and not like well fuck if Cody you know Randy and Kevin can beat this bloodline why does Roman care you know Roman could take care of those three you know Cody he needed help but he took care of Randy he took care of Kevin if those three can take care of this bloodline then what's the point of Roman returning outside of you fucked up Paul so I think bloodline definitely needs yeah. to this match um, I think so yeah story like what it says yeah uh, now we've got the women's money in the bank. We've got EO Sky, Chelsea Green, Lyra Valkyria, Tiffany Stratton, Naomi, and Zoe Stark. Uh, I will say this for this women's one, I don't feel like there's a clear cut favorite. There are people who I want to win, but I don't think there's one outlier that's like, okay, it's like we know who's winning this match. But where are your thoughts on this? Who do, who who do you think should win, and who do you want to win, or is it both the same? Right. Um. So I'll, I'll say this about the whole pay per view. I like this pay per view on paper because the entire show I'm not dead set on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's not you know this isn't backlash where it's like oh Cody AJ that'll be fun. Go oh, Cody. You know Priest of Jade that'll be fun. It's gonna be Priest. You know this is actually I feel like there's room for just about anything to happen. Uh, and yeah, there's not a clear favorite here. I think there's a chance Naomi takes it. I think there's a solid chance Tiffany Stratton takes it. Um, I'm, my mind and my heart is going to go with Chelsea Green. I am sold, sold, sold on her having fun with this thing for a while. I think she deserves it. I think Tiffany has time to do plenty in the future. Let's give it to Chelsea Green, who's been at it for a little bit longer here. Um, she can fail. She can have fun. She can win it in a in a fun way too. You know, you can do a couple different ways there. I I I I just love my girl CG. I want her to win it. So you want her to win? Do you think she wins? I, it? I think she will. So you yeah, think, I want think both. you want and think yes. Chelsea's gonna win it? Okay. Yes. I still want my booking that I had for this was a couple weeks back where I said you have like either EO and Valkyria or Valkyria and Stratton fighting at the top, fighting over the suitcase. Chelsea's knocked out on the fucking mat. They lose the grip of the briefcase and the briefcase falls on Chelsea and Chelsea wins it that way. If Chelsea's going to win, she has to stumble into winning this. She can't just climb up and take it. If she does, okay, fine. But I think for the Chelsea character, the two people fighting over it above her and it just falling into her hands is the perfect writing for Chelsea to win this match. I want Chelsea to win this match because she is doing such a great job for her character. I think she's winning a lot of the people over, but we have yet to get her as a believable threat for the title because of the losses she's taken. There is no way we're going to get Chelsea to that point without a money in the bank briefcase. Whereas everyone else on here, outside of maybe Zoe Stark, they need to just book her better. But EO, Lyra, Tiffany, Naomi, all of them have believability that they can get to, to a title match on their own accord without needing the briefcase. If I'm going with a with a with a who probably will win if we're if we're not gonna go the Chelsea route, then it's probably gonna be Tiffany. Uh just because Tiffany's just as hot right now in terms of, of that. I don't think EO, 
I think EO and Lyra are going to cancel each other out. And Naomi, there's no, unless you're really wanting to have a real legit storyline between Naomi and Bailey, I don't really think that like really is going to set things off. Uh, and then Zoe's just kind of that outlier. So I think literally it comes between Tiffany and Chelsea, but I think the money, the crowd reaction, I think everything works with Chelsea winning this match. And like I said, the dumber the way she wins it, the better. I don't, what I don't want is I don't want Piper to show up and try to do the, uh, the like Spike Dudley thing where she just puts Chelsea on her shoulders and then climbs. No, the I was actually going to say that too. It can happen, but I, I don't want that. I, I, I literally want it to, like, stumble into her hands and her just win and going, I fucking won? Oh, my God. Not just her. I don't want her pulling it down. I want it to, like, fall in her hands and win. Like, I feel like that would make the most comical sense because of what Chelsea's character is. Uh, so I think both of us are in agreement. We both want Chelsea. You think she 100% will. I feel like if Chelsea doesn't, it's definitely going to be Tiffany Stratton, which once again. Well, no, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Tiffany's an easy second place for me. I Because, again, she's right on the same festival. You know, she's hot right now. She's putting on good matches. Like, go ahead and solidify it. They like her, I think. But, and like, you, also have, you, also have the, you also have the Nia Jax wild card in that yep. as well because they're yep. now kind of a thing. Um if Tiffany wins, I'll be a little bummed that Chelsea didn't win, but I also I won't be Max. I'm like, well, if anyone was going to win it outside of Chelsea, I'm glad that it, it's fucking Tiffany. Um, not probably going to be the main event, but we got the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. We got Jey Uso, Carmelo Hayes, Andrade, Chad Gable, L.A. Knight, and Drew McIntyre. I'm not I, – I still – and not sure where we're going to go with this. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, you're always making me go first, eh? Uh, no, but uh, yeah, this <laughs> one's even trickier because, okay, Andrade, happy you're here. You're not winning it. Let's throw him out. Um, that's my first throw out. Andrade, glad you're here. You'll probably do some cool shit. I like you. You're not winning this. Uh, I think we're going to have some shenanigans. We've already built in. Like, I could see Logan Paul screwing over uh, L.A. Knight or one of his henchmen. Um, some prime bottles getting involved. I could see... Um, uh, uh, oh, I think the Wyatt Six might uh, just abduct, uh, abduct Chad at some point. Like I, think they, I don't think we're not going to feel them. I think yeah. Chad's totally going to be in the foot, middle of a fucking climb and then lights go out and he's just going to disappear or we'll see him being carried away or whatever. I think we're totally going to get some Wyatt Six involvement here. So I feel like Chad's not going to necessarily get it here. There's, of course, always the fun. You see a punk going to show up and fuck over Drew. Is AJ Lee going to show up? That's been a fun rumor. Like, you know. Uh, I feel like if, I feel like if he's going to show up, it'll be at SummerSlam when her when Drew and Yeah, big, it's probably bigger. Yeah. I feel like if, we're, if they're going to do her, it's going to be them. I feel like the cleanest person and in the same vein as like a Tiffany Strand, I think Carmelo Hayes might walk away with this thing. I'm going Carmelo. Really? What about Jay? You didn't say anything about Jay. I think Jay, I think he's about to get involved in the bloodline stuff. And I, mm. I just, I don't know if there's enough time to, for him to play with the briefcase. I don't know. I mean, he's got a year. <laughs> he's got a year. Yeah, um, but is he going to in the middle of all the other shenanigans? I don't know. Maybe. No, but I mean, he's he can definitely, hold... he's a possibility. I mean, there's, there's an poster with him by himself on it. So, I mean, he can hold it till past mania. And so, I mean, he can just keep that damn briefcase no, till know, past just... mania and then book it. Because I'm, I'm yeah, kind of in agreement with you, not on Carmelo Hayes winning. I feel like he's the Zoe Stark <laughs> of this match. He's he's not winning this thing. He hasn't he hasn't done anything. Andrade, who has less of a shot, Andrade or, or Carmelo? <sighs> Carmelo, to me. Really? Okay. I All do. Right. I do. I think both of them are going to be in there just because they're ladder matches, they're high flyers, they're yeah. doing some cool shit. I agree. Chad Gable is going to get Wyatt sixth. He's going to get taken out of the equation because of the Wyatts. Um, the other three, I agree. Jay, I feel like Jay could easily win this, but once again, we got to start getting him mixed in with the bloodline. Are they going to fuck with him in this match? It's going to keep him out of winning this. But I also, now here's the thing, other thing too. There's so much interference that can happen in this match, and you don't want this yeah, overly yeah. booked because you got the Wyatt six with Gable. Be. I agree. Logan Paul, LA Knight makes sense because I feel like we're going to get them at SummerSlam. Drew and Punk makes sense. Jay and the Bloodline. Like, the only people who might not get interfered on is Carmelo and Andrade. 
and I don't know if you want a money in the bank match being overtly like just over stuff with with bullshit, but I feel like this is gonna go one of two ways. I I think a lot of people want LA Knight to win, but I feel like they want to see what LA Knight can do with a with a secondary title. So I feel like Logan Paul, LA Knight, that's gonna be locked in at SummerSlam, and they're gonna want to see what LA Knight does with the US title. I don't feel like putting giving him the, the briefcase is gonna help his character right now. I feel like the the fans want that because they love LA, but in terms of his character, he needs to he needs to have a single title. If, a secondary if he title wasn't run. in the middle of technically a US title feud, I'd say he has a good shot. But the fact yeah. that they started the Logan thing, it's like okay, that's obviously yeah, yeah that, that that's gonna cancel him out. Yeah, Andrade, no, Camarillo, no, Chad. If he wasn't getting Wyatt sixth, I'd be like, Chad's a real possibility. Yeah. Chad ain't winning this, so it comes down to Jay and Drew, and I feel like Drew is the favorite because it's Drew, but Punk's Punk's already stopped him twice now from winning the belt do you think punk's gonna let him just fucking win the briefcase too like no yeah. punk's gonna do everything he can to just make drew's life a live in hell that's gonna lead up to SummerSlam. so that leaves jay and yes the bloodline they need to start doing that bloodline feud but i feel like they're not gonna fuck with him here so by by basically process of a fucking elimination I guess Jay, but I also would be okay if Drew winning this, and then that kind of Drew maybe tries to cash in, and then Punk fucks him over that way, like that as well. But that's the other problem too, is that like based off of this, if Drew wins, then he's going to be going after maybe Gunther after that, which once again not a bad feud, but we know Punk and Drew's got a thing going. If Jay wins, we've already seen Jay and Gunther go. It was fine. It wasn't great. Um, I just don't... I feel like any of the winners that make sense outside of LA Knight is on Raw. And they're, whoever's going to win that on the Raw side is going to keep that briefcase for a while because we're in the middle of this pre-Seth Gunther thing. And we're not going to throw in a briefcase in the middle of that. With LA Knight winning or Andrade or Carmelo, Cody doesn't really have a an opponent unless it's going to be Solo or, like I said, Randy turning heel and, and going after that. But I also don't see any of them really going after Cody right now. So this is definitely a briefcase that's going to be sticking around for a while, whereas the women's could happen at any point. So, yeah, I think Jay, I think money-wise it makes sense for Jay because he's, you know, yeet in the bank. He can put, he can have his own fucking briefcase that says yeet on it like they did with, with Priest and marketability. I think that makes sense because they'll sell that shit. Uh, Drew, you just know eventually the shoe's going to drop with Punk. Um, it, it, I feel like it's between LA Knight and Jay, but I feel like, like you said, if they had not started shit with Logan Paul, um, then I'd be like, yeah, LA Knight. But no, I, I feel like it, it, it's got to be Jay. It's got to be Jay. Um, I feel like, I feel like Jay and the Bloodline thing is not going to start right this on Money in the Bank. So I feel like Jay's going to get his moment here. If if it happens, cool. But we are still, it's July. We're still four months out from War Games. They don't have to rush the Bloodline shit yet. I feel like Jimmy needs to be coming back probably sooner than later, though. Um, same thing with Roman. Uh, I feel like Jay's going to be like an add on eventually, like Sammy. So I don't feel like they need to fuck with him because Solo, I don't think, I don't think, unless they do something on SmackDown tonight because they're all there, I don't see Bloodline fucking with Jay yet yet um so yeah I'm, I'm going with jay and you're going with carmelo hayes that's a that's a bold prediction i just don't see a reason for carmelo hayes to win but hey that's why we do this um but yeah uh, anything else you'd like to add before we end this uh no like you said i actually this is one of the WWE reviews as far as just gonna have fun and being a little more predictable i'm actually quite looking forward to it here you know what i mean yeah i don't this know is- if we're gonna have any five-star matches over the ladder matches can live up to the you know a good solid ladder match but as far as just a fun show, this kind of checks the boxes. And I agree with what you said. This is definitely like we're making our predictions. We're pretty confident in our predictions. But this is definitely probably but, one of the most unpredictable pay per views for WWE in a while. Sammy's been so unstoppable. There's a world where Sammy wins. There's a couple females that we said, a couple males that could take it. Um, who they could Damian throw a curveball. Is- we could be Damian and wrong. Seth can go either way in certain storylines. In fact, I'll even yeah. I'll throw this That's I'll throw this out here. 
yeah, I'll throw this out here real quick. My my girlfriend, she decided to give us a little prediction that she had herself. Uh, she goes, I think Damien loses the belt due to interference from Finn, uh, which causes a feud with them and breaks up Judgment Day, and Finn becomes the leader, I, I guess, effectively with Liv. So that's her prediction for that. She didn't give me for anyone else. but So even she's making her little predictions for that also. So like I said, Money in the Bank, I am – really excited for this pay-per-view i am intrigued with how this is going to go um but we will see what happens and we'll be back here next week to talk about our reactions to it so uh hopefully you know it's earlier in the week and not later in the week but it all depends on our schedule but uh we'll be back next week to discuss this what are your guys thoughts who do you guys have winning the money in the bank matches do you have chelsea do you have jay let us know who you guys think what do you guys think is damien winning is seth winning do you think Sammy's going to keep running this ride or is Braun going to be the new IC champion? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys did, go ahead and hit that like, share, and subscribe button to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos pop up on the Wrestling Crusaders. And of course, you can follow some of those social media outs you see below. Uh, also out right now, like I said, uh, AEW's Forbidden Door was last week, and we went over our reactions and thoughts, as well as kind of talk about what we think about what's going on with All In. Um, and like I said, we'll be back next week with uh, our uh, reactions to Money in the Bank. But until next time, we are the Wrestling Crusaders. I'm Sean Wascroop. That is Jordan, J-P-O Owens. And until next time, in case we don't see you, don't try this at home unless it's on your little brother. Don't tell mom. So, goodbye. <laughs> and good night. Bang!